Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video it's a little bit different because I would like to talk about my experience vlogging with my 5D Mark III. Yet it's a very old camera, I have it since end of 2012 and you know I still vlog it from time to time, not every time and especially in 2020 when we're under quarantine and if I do go out for photography it's going to be a quick one and for that I usually just bring my smaller cameras. That being said, I still vlog with this camera and I still like to vlog with this camera. There are some obvious limitations and there are some obvious pros here and there. So in this video, I would like to talk to you not only about my experience, but also when and why I would use this camera for um, shooting my vlog pretty much and also the pros and cons. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So before getting into experience part as well as the pros and cons, I would like to actually talk about when and why I actually use this camera for vlogging. So obviously the first reason is if I need to strip down to like the most minimalistic packing for my camera system, then usually my go-to is always my 5D Mark III. This lens, the 16-35 f4L IS, simply because it has that IS and I love shooting with ultra wide. And if I'm shooting with ultra wide, I don't need my f2.8 and everything most of the time and I would bring my 51.8 STM as well as my Canon 85mm 1.2 which is sitting right here. These are the three lenses and one camera setup that I usually bring everywhere if I need a super minimalistic packing for my camera. I realize that my camera system you know in terms of resolution wise as well as image quality i do have better cameras that can produce better image qualities and other cameras that produces better video qualities and offers more video features such as auto focusing system as well as a flip out lcd screen even the m50 that i have has all those features and will be able to record in slow motion full hd there's that but for in terms of like if I need everything to be compact and all the lenses that I would like to take will be taken with me, then this camera is pretty much the system that I still love and rely on. It is DSLR, I still love DSLR. I'm starting to like mirrorless more and I'm filming this video with a Fuji mirrorless camera as well. But, you know, in terms of lenses and trust, I still like DSLR and to work with DSLRs more and in terms of the camera that I would like to take with me and what I feel comfortable with, it's always my 5D Mark III, even though I have better resolution both for video and photography, but I still, as I said, like to take this camera. Talking about this camera, it also brings me to the second point, which is the weather sealing and the construction of this body. I have dropped this camera several times. It has a lot of battle scars on it it has never failed me and yeah it's it's a really rugged camera so if i just need it for vlogging and also for travel as well as doing some professional stuff on the travel or on the go things like that this camera can do it all the quality might not be the best that you know my camera systems offer but it's the one that i can rely the most on and also give still giving me such a good file to actually work with whether it's in video or in photography mode. I've made a video before about installing different picture style into this camera. If you're into flat picture style, you still can film with this camera and shoot in flat. Obviously, this is not the sharpest 1080p video, but the video file coming out of this sensor can be sharpened. And when you sharpen the video, not internally, but on the computer, it will make your footage come up to life, I guarantee. That being said, is it a downer that it doesn't have a 4K? To a certain extent, sometimes, yes, if I want to do crop in and if I want to see more detail of certain things. And because nowadays more cameras has better dynamic range for certain types of things to take pictures or videos of, I can miss that sometimes, but a lot of times, actually 90% of the time, I'm really satisfied with the dynamic range coming out from this camera and in video if I go to that flat profile that I can install or buy the actual picture profile that gives an even an extra flat profile, you know, I can restore that. I don't have Magic Lantern on here, but I did 
purchased and also downloaded some of the flat profi profiles, which you can also research if you are interested in, which you can also apply to other Canon cameras with uh, EOS utility, because that's where you can actually register your own picture style into the camera. So there's another good thing. And the third is the weight, as well as the size of the camera. The size of the camera is still small for, for me. It's still very, very small, I, I find. Yes, it is a full-size camera, and if you're coming from mirrorless, this is big. Unless if you're coming from like a Lumix G9 or the X-H1, this is not too big. But if you're coming from like the X-T20, X-T100, X-T1, X-T2, X-T3, what have you, then, you know, this is a pretty big camera. But because of the size, weight, and uh, how sturdy it is, it makes it more stable when you vlog with the camera. You find that sometimes when you vlog with something like a small mirrorless camera like this, or a compact camera like this, it's it transfer the actual shake. And because there's no pretty much heavy enough counterweight here, there's also a lot of shake from the hand. And with this camera, because there's the actual counterweight of this camera being the size and the weight of this camera itself, it doesn't shake as much. And when it does shake, it looks more natural. Like it looks more smooth and cinematic, if I can use that word. Because if you try filming handheld, even normal short film with a DSLR versus let's say a small mirrorless camera, you'll find that the shake the shakiness from the hand produces by the hand, it's more smooth than the actual shakiness produced by holding the lighter mirrorless camera because there is the weight to actually hold onto and it feels very solid and sturdy in the hand. So yeah, so pretty much when I'm traveling as well as like whether it's travel with people that you know are very, very important or just solo traveling, things like that. And if I need my gear to be minimalistic, this is pretty much the camera that I take and also vlog with. It's also very reliable. It never failed on me pretty much. So those are the three main points. There are, there are, there are more minor points, but those are the three main points why I still vlog with this camera and when I vlog with this camera as well. So now let's get more into the, well, that was also wrapping with, a bit with the experience, to be honest. Let's get more into the negative and positive and this is also coming from my experience. I'm sure other people will have their own experience and opinion vlogging with this camera because every photographer and filmmaker will use their own cameras in their own way that fits their own way of shooting. And for my way of shooting, I would like to start off with the negative. So what I like about this camera is also the negative point of this camera. Being such a heavy camera, I will not be able to hold it steady like for a very long period of time. Because of the weight, I don't do a lot of work out. The only workout I do is holding my cameras. And yes, it can get very heavy, but it's not like workout heavy kind of thing. So I can hold it for a long time, very steady. Well, not too long. So like after two minutes, I might have to stop. It also sometimes is a bit distracting if I just switch my hand like this because, you know, I'm just switching perspective and I'm also just moving my viewers around, you know, so I cannot always switch my arm like this every time I am tired of one side. So that's the downside. But luckily, most of my vlog clips has been very short, except for the ones where the camera is actually on the tripod. That's where I actually talk a lot like right now. So yeah, I'm sorry and I apologize for having a long video, but I hope you can bear with that. Anyway. <laughs> Getting into another negative point. Another negative point is also the layout of the button because if you're vlogging like this, this is still a photography first camera and I cannot, at least I don't know how to remap a record button if you can remap a video record button on the old 5D Mark III. So if you're like this, it's not hard to just press this first and record, but you know, it would also be nice to have it set to the shutter button. But as of now, the shutter button is just set to actually taking picture. Even if you're in video mode, you can take a still by just clicking the shutter button, but you can also deactivate that. That you can deactivate, but you cannot remap it. So yeah, 
anyway, <laughs> another downside is obviously the autofocusing system. It doesn't have a continuous autofocusing system for video. You can pre-focus and everything. And of course, what I like to do is being in photo mode in the viewfinder and also press the half shutter so it actually focuses on me right away and then just switch really fast and then just press um, video record. And that's just pretty much how the way I like to shoot with this camera. Well, it's pretty much the only way I find that it's fast for me to shoot. And then if I want to show you guys the scene straight ahead of me, I just, so from this, I just flip like this and then either I look on the actual meter screen here or just look into the LCD if the subject is sharp or not. And then I work with this lens for so long now that I remember pretty much about where with muscle memory, about where um, my focus needs to be when I switch back to my face. Obviously, I will not always get that correct because there were some vlogs, well, some clips that were out of focus because when I switch back to my face, it like I, I, I miss focus by a little bit. You still can see me, but you know, it's something that I just need to learn and get used to. And those are pretty much the negative points on this camera. Well, the main negative points from my experience that I vlog with this camera. Oh, one more, no flip out LCD. So there's no way of telling me if like I'm in frame. Well, with the wide angle, yes, I'm in frame, but there's no way of, no precise way of knowing roughly where in the frame I'm in. So sometimes if I have a friend or two friends, I can do this and both of them would be in the area. But if two of them are over here, I have no way of knowing that if one of them, you can see them or if this person is covering that person. So yeah, there's that to work with, but that's just the negative part of this camera. Now moving on to the positive side of this camera while vlogging with this camera. Well, the 1080p on this camera is still great. You have both all eye and IPB compression. Can you do slow motion? Yes, you can do nice slow motion, but in 720. Is it nice? Yes, but in terms of resolution, is it really up there to today's standards? Not really. Can you still produce nice short films and nice vlogs with it? I think so. If you're not picky about having it at 4K or something. So don't upscale because it will be soft, but you can still apply some like light color grading as well as some light sharpening if you're shooting it at 720p for slow-mo reasons and things like that so there is that this camera can shoot in all i sorry in pal and ntsc so for those living in the states ntsc would be the way to go but for us pal is pretty good well for pretty much most of us Anyway, um, the actual color science, which is the next point, is yes, a lot of people talk about the color science of Canon. The Canon color science is there. You don't really need to grade or need to color correct if it's just your normal travel vlog or just vlogging with your friends, things like that, because the color coming out of this camera is already pretty good and pretty natural. And there's really, really nice skin tone and the color reproduction, everything. The details are still there. And for 1080p camera, this is a pretty good vlogging camera. And because it's 1080p, if you have a lot of pimples like me, it's nicer when it's, you know, not as detailed as 4K. So <laughs> there's that, if that counts as another point for this camera. Another factor is something I already mentioned earlier, which is the weather sealing of this camera. The weather sealing is great because as I mentioned earlier, I did take this camera through so many situations, through so many conditions, like weather conditions and temperatures that to normal cameras, it might just freeze or it might just overheat or it might just be too cold and not power on. And this camera just handled it all. And yeah, it's, it's been through so many things. I tried replacing this once with Panasonic cameras, but that didn't go very well. First of all, even the weather sealed Panasonic cameras does not handle weather as well as my old trusty 5D Mark III, because sometimes it will not power on, sometimes it freezes, actually a lot of times it freezes, as in like the system inside actually freezes, even if I 
turn off the camera and everything so it's always very annoying and very buggy and to be able to have a camera that's weather sealed being able to work anywhere as well as really reliable system like this one it's great i i cannot imagine like not using a canon system i know it sounds a bit like an advertisement for them but the most pro gear I have is my Canon gear and then followed by my Fuji. But Fuji, I mainly use it for uh, my street photography and some light vlogging, things like that. And even some light vlogging is being covered my, by my M50 already. So yeah. Another positive point is you can shoot RAW with this camera if you install Magic Lantern. I'm not that type of person. If I shoot RAW or anything, usually I will just use the RED camera or rent another RED camera, things like that. So using this for vlogging is just more than good enough for me. And uh, yeah, so just to recap, it's the build quality, the reliability, the quality is still great. Oh, and talking about the quality, if you're shooting in all eye and suddenly you forgot to back up your memory cards or you lost your spare memory cards, things like that, you can bump from all I down to IPB and it will save you a lot more space and you still can record at 1080p. Mind you, you might not be able to grade as much as the all I because of the more compressed 1080p. The sharpness will roughly be the same as the, the all I mode, just that if you're filming a lot of action, like if you're running with the camera or you're shooting someone moving a lot with the camera, the IPB being more compressed. If you try to color grade, it might fall apart easier, but if you try to sharpen it, it will probably still look very good and not fall apart as easily and will handle it closely to the all eye uh, compression because it is still coming from the same sensor. There's that to cue in mind. So the 1080p is still great. And there's dual card slot. If you are that type of person who love dual card slots, you can install plat, uh, flat uh, picture profile with this camera, which is great if you like color correcting and color correction and things like that. You can install Magic Lantern if that's something you're into. And yeah, I would just like to wrap it up here. This has been my experience vlogging with this camera. Do I still love shooting and vlogging with this camera? Heck yes. And it is so reliable and the fact that I, I've been using this camera for, well, since 2012, the end of 2012, makes me just have a more emotional tie with this camera and I don't mind using this camera. And yeah, that's has, that has been the video about my experience vlogging with this camera and how I feel about vlogging with this camera and its limitation and everything based on my experience. Of course, you will probably have your own facts and experience about vlogging with this camera. It's not the best in the world, I admit, but it's still a good camera to vlog with, in my opinion and in my way of shooting, things like that. If you want to share any experience, feel free to write them down in the description below or send me a direct message. As well, if you have any questions, please leave them down below and feel free to send me a direct message, whether it's on Instagram or here on YouTube. If you need a free photography guidebook, absolutely for free. Don't need to send me your email. I will not bombard you with newsletters or any spam email nonsense. It's absolutely for free on my website. I will link that down in the description below as well. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a great time. Stay safe and have fun shooting. Bye for now.